Ladies and gentlemen, Joey of Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, brother? How's your day going? Chilling. You know, it's um, it's a day, so it's like going and shit. <laughs> so it's one of those days. Uh, kind of. I don't know. It's like, yeah, it's like a regular day, but like I've been in pain. All I just started like a blackout on my arm, so I've been in pain all day. And, uh... I decided to go to the gym and do other uh, extraneous activities like a fucking idiot. So, you know, <laughs> it's been a day. For sure. Uh, for those that may not know who you are, sir, may, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment. Plug and promote anything and everything. Yes. Uh, my name is Joey. Um, I'm the singer of a little band called Varsity, and I live in Brooklyn, New York. Hell yeah. And then it's just, it's at varsity on and then what am i At missing varsity.nyc on on everything on everything but on no everything. vowels because fuck vowels so. yeah hell yeah for sure <laughs> those bastards but uh let's see uh well, the first thing i want to ask you is how did you link up with larry from from dropout kings dropout kings are, are good friends of ours we've had him on the show a couple times and i've i've spoken with larry a bunch of times but i'm just curious how that partnership kind of came about yeah, so um, we went on tour with them uh, January of last – no, no, it wasn't January. It was February of last year. February or March, one of them. Uh, and Larry was on the tour. And at the time, we were, like, uh, about to transition, like, over and, like, get new management and everything else. And I ended up hanging out with Larry a lot on that tour. And at towards the end of the tour, I kind of just asked. I was like, hey, do you think you'd ever, like – like manage like another band and he was like oh you guys yeah yeah and i was like oh <laughs> okay cool easy um and then that's really it <laughs> that's, that's just but that's I, I guess i guess to like elaborate on the question not to go into detail or use names or anything but what would you say i guess it's safe to say you were unhappy with your current management and you were looking for new management is there something that they didn't do maybe no, not necessarily. So my old manager actually just transitioned into the band. So he's actually our guitarist now. Oh. Um, and so what? we just figured, we were like, hey, well, yeah. So <laughs> we're like, well, I, he, we can't like have you being in the band and then being a manager. He also manages a bunch of other bands also. So we were just like, if you're going to transition into the band, I just want you to be like fully in the band and not have to worry about other kind of things, um, which he also agreed. And he was like, yeah, actually, that's like kind of what I wanted anyway. And then we just asked Larry, and we're like, Larry, you want to do this? Cool. Hell yeah. That's it. Awesome. Uh, Michaela is my co-host today. She's actually also from from New York. Michaela, what was the first question you'd like to ask, Joe? Hey. Hey. Um, I would like to ask, what are you jamming on the side right now? Like, what bands are you into? Ooh, what bands am I into? Um, Right now, I'm, I'm listening to, like, a lot of Sleep Token, like, just strictly sleep token <laughs> I, I cannot <laughs> stop listening to this goddamn band like i, I can't do it for sure Hell yeah uh sleep token is like one of those bands where like i like it like every other jam but then there's some jams i just kind of can't get into but they're like the hot big thing right now though they're blowing yeah, up well so okay just just to be fair i was into them years ago before they were like the hot <laughs> big thing um there's something about uh their vocalists uh, vessel's voice that like has always stood out to me and i'm i'm just hooked i'm like just hooked on how like he sings over like these really heavy like instrumentals so i just can't stop listening to them oh yeah i've noticed you guys have been dropping like different versions reimagined versions of of some of your older material like wilt came out today and it was like a different version of it uh what was the thought process behind <laughs> that that whole thing of just doing different versions of of some older songs including some new ones too but um we were just bored so <laughs> we're, we were bored and we're like we should we should do this um it's funny though uh wilt that video was actually from 2020 so that that version of the song is on um the cloud city ep we put out but the video we accidentally never put it out um 
<laughs> Wait a second. How, how does that uh, happen? How do you shoot the... a video and then, then accidentally never put it out? Dude, so <laughs> when we when we were filming music videos for like Cloud City, which was like Shameless and Massive and all those things, we we always spoke about the singles, which was like Shameless and Massive, and then we put those out, and then I was in the studio recording the next record, and for some strange reason, we moved from the singles to what's going to be singles on Welcome Home. And we completely forgot that we had other stuff that we wanted to put out because we just moved <laughs> so quickly. And uh, today, well, over the weekend, I was uh, talking with like the guys and like the label about a bunch of things. And I was like, hey, whatever happened to this video? And everyone was like, I don't know. We just didn't, <laughs> didn't put it out. So I was like, whatever. I'm just going to secretly put it out like in the morning or whatever. That is awesome. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad you did. More more material for the fans, fans like <laughs> us. Uh, what? You obviously, I'm sure you get complimented on your voice all the time. You have an absolutely beautiful voice. Is there any odd things that you that you do to to warm up before you record or play a show? Um, odd things I do. Uh, I do like this like yawning thing while like doing like squats. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. If, like, I don't know if that's weird, but it like it's, it's I, different. I learned this technique a while ago where it's like you, you're like yeah you like like y'all like yeah like from high to low but you're, but you're, you're like, doing squats and stuff doing, while doing it do a squat yeah it's like i i don't know why but it's like i that's how i warm myself up for like the stage and everything else i'm like oh, i'll just do some squats and do my workout and i just you know my vocal warm up and just do it at the same time it's fucking weird but i mean yeah, whatever I'm works sorry. whatever works hell yeah um i i know we we talked about uh the hot sauce and the trivia did you bring any hot sauce I got hot sauce packets, yeah. And that works. That totally counts. Yeah. To do the trivia, though, I need to know what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Uh, probably The Matrix. Any of The Matrix movies, including the newest one? Uh, don't ask me anything about the newest one. I watched it once, and I never want to watch it again. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll go way <laughs> back to the to the old ones. Way yeah, back. you can ask me about the old ones. <laughs> okay. Hell yeah. Michaela, go ahead and shoot off another question. Let me um let me look up some Matrix trivia. So what bands got you into music or like first got you into being wanting to be in a band? Um, so the very first band was uh from first to last, back when Sonny was in it. Okay. Um yeah, I went to a uh one of my friends just took me to a show randomly and i wasn't into rock or anything at the time um this was like in high school shit uh he took me to the show and it was uh from first to last thrice and uh someone else i don't i don't remember who else it was and uh he went to go see thrice and i you know i enjoyed thrice but uh from first to last came on stage and i remember sunny just started singing and like just i don't know there was something about his presence on stage and it was like at that moment where i was like i need to do this like i want to do was this exactly the, the dear diary did. days or the heroin days um that was dear diary okay that, that album's well both of those albums are amazing for sure uh dude those are like two of my favorite albums of all time still and i mean thrice is like still one of my favorite bands of all time did you still follow from first to last uh even though even when sunny left like all their other vocalists I, uh yeah i followed everything um I liked I liked it for the most part. I wasn't crazy about it. Um, and then Sonny came back and you know he did like Make War and the other songs and I thought Make War was sick. Um, and then they disappeared again. So I was like, well, I guess I'll wait another twenty years for him to rejoin the band. So for real, all, I think <laughs> Listen, it's it's gonna happen. I hope so eventually. I will but... wait. For, I will wait forever. I Hell don't yeah. care. <laughs> I will wait. Let's see if we can stump you on the Matrix Reloaded trivia. <laughs> So I think it's the second one. Yeah. What kind of car do the twins drive? I'm, I'm, I'm done. I don't know. We got we got you already. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Hell yes. It's oh, a Lord. it's a Cadillac, a black Cadillac. Enjoy enjoy the uh, the hot sauce. I'll do some with you. I got some Death Valley Ghost Pepper right here. I just want you. I just want you guys to know. I fucking love hot sauce. So. <laughs> So do this I. Is not, yeah, this is not a bad thing for me. I, I just love hot sauce so much. Whew. Uh, we thought of a question before you came on, too. Yeah. Then this one's really hot. What, <laughs> when, what, what, what does a band do when you're in the middle of tour and all of a sudden 
the night before, you literally sold out of everything you got. What is the process for oh. <laughs> for how an artist gets all their merch ready for probably not the next show, but the one after that? So, okay, so I have I have two answers for it. Um, one is a funny one. One is like a more serious one. So, normally what we do is we over order things. So like if something goes to sell out, um, we'll have like a bit more in like the warehouse so they can send it to us so that we're not like out of it. And then when that comes into us, we we order again on top of that. So we're like, hey, um, here's another order. Keep that in the warehouse in case this one kind of goes out. So we keep it going. Great idea. Um, we kind of we kind of messed that up recently. Um, we did a tour with 10 years and uh, we sold out of merch and didn't do that. And so we put in an order, but because the order was, you know, it was like, oh, it's going to take a week to get it. We had no merch for a week. So what we were doing was we were going to Guitar Center and buying things and then just reselling it. Like we were just like signing it and just like beating it up and just like reselling it. We're just like, we don't have no merch. So you could either buy it on our online store or we went to Guitar Center and bought all this shit today. Um, we can just go ahead and sign it and take pictures with it and break it or do whatever you want with it. And now it's yours. That's awesome. This is two great ideas how to still generate revenue. Well, one of them to generate revenue and one to just make sure you always have a backup plan. Really, really cool. Uh, Joey, tell me about <laughs> the worst show you've ever played in your whole life. Everything went wrong at this particular show. Um, okay. Um, when Back when we first started in 2016, we played a show in, I think it was Indianapolis, and uh, two people showed up. Um, it was like a kid and his dad, and we got there, and the promoter didn't know anything about a PA system or anything, so like we have like... <laughs> we had like all of our guitars set up and everything and we had like backtracks and clicks and everything else and uh she was she was new at it so she didn't know exactly what she needed like type of equipment and she was like oh i thought you guys would just bring everything and so i i didn't bring anything and so i'm like well i can't acapella over instruments like i i have no idea what to do um and so we just played the show and i just yelled and blew out my voice and it was amazing the show must go on, I guess they say. Wow. The show must go on. <laughs> Hell yeah. Michaela, do you have another question? Um, Favorite snack on the road? <sighs> okay. <laughs> favorite munchy, munchy no, snack? I, <laughs> I have like a, like a hardcore obsession with like Milky Ways. But I cannot have them on tour. Um, I'm going to tell you why. So I, I, I suffer from like... A severe case of like impulse buying so after a show i'll just go into any gas station and i'll just start buying chocolates the thing is i'll buy a bunch of milky ways and instead of eating them i'll fall asleep on top of them and i'll wake up in the morning with chocolate everywhere it, like it literally looks like i took a giant shit on myself <laughs> so many times on tour. <laughs> that is hilarious <laughs> It's literally happened to me so many times on tour where I woke up and I'm like, oh my God, I shit myself. And I'm like, oh no, it's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is hilarious. Hell yeah. yeah. What's, what's, uh, what's the number one? I'm sure with as many shows as you guys play, you play with a ton of locals that are particular to that area. What's the most common mistake you see a really small, let's say the opening band that night, the first band on when the doors first open, that they, they, they make that you don't want that band to make anymore. Maybe you just don't want to be like, guys, you can't do that, you know? Um, see, I don't, I don't, I try not to like think of things like that because I know all bands are like really, like really, like especially like a lot of local bands are still like learning, so they don't really, they don't really know as much. Um. The most common mistakes that I see like a lot of bands make is <laughs> they try to overdo their live shows and just they have like all this equipment on stage and all these like other things that they don't necessarily know how to use right away. And they, they pack it all on stage, like, you know, lights and everything else. And then they they kind of get stuck and it eats into their set because, um, you know, they don't have like a light guy or a sound guy. And I always try to tell them, say, hey, just music first like your first job is to get everyone into your band um and that's usually most of it is how you are on stage and how your music sounds like if you can hook them with that the rest of the shit will just come and like as you go like you'll learn and and then you know as you get more help and stuff like that like you'll you'll be able to do a lot of things i mean i know for us we were terrible before because we didn't have a sound guy and we would try to do like a bunch of things ourselves and that was honestly one of the things we were told they was like hey if you're gonna have all this stuff that you don't know how to use 
you need a sound guy. You need to bring a professional along with you that knows how to do this and sets it up for you so that you just come on stage and you're ready to go. Or a light guy that can set up the whole show and you get on stage, you're ready to go. So I see I see a lot of bands, you know, their heart's in the right place. They want to give you a good show, but they don't necessarily know how to use all the things they have. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Uh, Chad wants me to ask about um, your Michael Jackson influence. Ah. <laughs> Um, well, what about it? I love Michael Jackson. He's the king, and that's it. That's just I don't I don't know how else to put that. <laughs> He's the king. If you had to pick, what's your favorite Michael Jackson song? Um, it's the Falling in Love off of Off the Wall, which is like I think the album right before uh, the Thriller album. Hell yeah, very cool. Lo uh, absolutely love that song. I'm t I'm gonna ask you one more uh, trivia question regarding. Yeah regarding the matrix but i lost the question i don't know what happened so uh michaela go ahead and shoot one more off i gotta refine it i don't know where it went so you said i usually ask what the all-time favorite album is you said from first to last but um like what's another album that like would be in your top five another album maybe uh, something we wouldn't expect yeah like something give us give us an oddball one yeah okay god what is what is the name of that Katy Perry record with um It's a Katy Perry it's a Katy Perry record. <laughs> the first the Teenage Dream? Yes. Okay. Is that the name of the record? The one that had like six number one hits? That that entire record was perfect from beginning to end. Yeah, it's really, really good. Every song on that record was a fucking banger. Like I anytime I tell someone I'm like, yo, you can't you can't fuck with Katy Perry. Like she, she was the, she was the queen. Like she hit after hit after hit. I love it. Okay, <laughs> On in the Matrix, we're still regarding uh, the Matrix uh, Reloaded Part Two. I'm not even sure I can pronounce this word, but what is the name of the operator on the Nubuchadnezzar? Nubuchadnezzar? I don't know how to say that word, but you know what I'm talking about. I have no idea. It's a really long word. I'll put the word in chat. So, I don't know if you you can see it, but it, that's the word, new new bucket. You don't know who it is? No, I'm not even gonna try. Fuck it. The answer is Link. Oh. The answer is Link. It, says, it was the Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, that's how you say it. There it, it is, Link. right there. There you go. There it is. So we have stumped you again, my friend. Had you gotten it right though, we would have spun this wheel right here and then see what it lands on. I'll join you. Don't worry. On some more hot sauce. This time I got Japanese dragon's breath. So that means once this interview is concluded, we're gonna play uh, a hip hop song of your choice. Uh, okay. What's who's your favorite MC? God, um, probably like Jada Kiss. <laughs> really, Jada Kiss? Hell yeah! I saw nice. I saw the locks at uh, Lovers and Friends Festival in Vegas uh, last year. Dude, I used to be so hooked to Kiss like back in the day, like just so so hooked to it. Hell yeah, he's he's one of my favorites too for sure. Uh, I was not expecting that answer. Good call. No, what were you expecting? I don't know. I know. Because you're from you're from New York, I was thinking maybe like Biggie or Nas or somebody like that. I mean, but Kiss is from New York. I mean, that's true, but he, he, I just, I I mean, you're right. He's probably a better lyricist too. Maybe not better than Nas, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not better than Nas, but he's he, he out there. I mean, you know who else is nasty? Um, Cassidy. Yeah, good call. Cassidy was like, yo. Hell yeah. I love Cassidy. He was like the shit, and then he kind of just disappeared. And I was like, well, whatever. Who's who's somebody that that you that you want to work with in the industry that you've never had the opportunity to work with? Any genre? Any genre? Um, I really want to work with Doja Cat. Hell yeah! Did you see she's gonna put out like a hardcore album or something in the future? Yeah, I just saw that, and I'm all about it. All about it. It's gonna be fire, of course. Yes. If it's from this it's chat from, is learning from more. her. This chat is learning more about me than any interview I've probably ever done <laughs> we, we strive we strive for this hell yeah they're all gonna leave and be like wow he doesn't listen to metal at all <laughs> what's what's uh what's some stuff that you guys have planned i know a lot of times artists aren't allowed to tell us all the stuff that's coming out it's all you know pre-planned and whatnot but what are you allowed to tell us that we can expect the rest of 2023 i can tell you everything i don't give a shit what's my label gonna Excellent. drop me Excellent. no <laughs> um we got uh we got a couple of tours coming up um 
is one that starts at the end of April. Um, that I can't talk about because it's not our tour, so I gotta wait for them. Um, we just finished 15 songs um, that we got back, um, and awesome. we're just waiting on like music videos and things like that. And then once that's done, I'm just gonna start dropping singles all the time. So you haven't shot any of the videos yet? No, we haven't shot any of the videos. I just recently got. Well, I was on Shiprock uh, two weeks ago, a week ago, um, and so. I just got back home and I had to I had to finish up like some other things like some acoustics and stuff like that, so had no time to uh, to film anything. But um, we're gonna start now. Was there any Was there any particular artist on Shiprock that that you hadn't seen before that was like you had circled? I have to see this this artist's performance. Nova Twins. Nova Twins. Hell yeah! They I love their yeah. feature on uh, what was it? Bring me Bring me Horizon. Bring me Horizon. So that's that's how I found out about them. I was like, ah, this is like really good, and I watched them live, and I was like, holy shit very cool they're so good hell yeah we've got time for a couple more uh michaela what would be uh one of your final questions final question let's see um if you didn't sing like what instrument would you play in the band oh guitar well i'm awesome. so i am a guitarist i started off as a guitarist and then um i just started singing randomly is that how you guys ever, like ever demo or write music? Like, do you do you show the band, hey, I got this riff, I got this melody, and maybe they kind of take it from there? Or how does a how does a varsity song start from scratch? Um, so I'm a little selfish. Uh, <laughs> I started this band like by myself a couple of years ago. Um, the guys who are in the band are like, they're all like my best friends. But um, normally the way it works is because I'm I'm the only one that has like a, a studio. Um, I will literally write an entire song and then just be like, yo, this is the song. Like, what do you guys, what do you guys think? And sometimes they'll go in and they'll change parts. Most of the time they're just like, the song's perfect. Let's just, let's go. And, um, that's usually how it works. But I, I write so much like for the, for whatever we're doing now, we got 15 songs mixed, but I think I wrote like 36 or like 37. And wow. we were like, well, these, these aren't going to make it, these will. So I just scrapped them, and I was like, okay, we'll go with whatever works, works. But um, that's usually how it works. Like, I'll, I'll usually write – I'll try to write an idea and give it to them, but my brain is just – it doesn't it doesn't work that way. If I start something, my brain is like, you got to finish it. We'll end on a couple fun ones. Uh, let's say, let's say hypothetically, Spine Farm's like, guess what? It's uh, it's uh, just for no reason. We're gonna give everybody in the band ten million dollars per band member. So you're good. You you have enough money to take care of your families, buy all the gear, tour bus, all that. And you got a lot of money left over. What is just a cool, fun, random toy that you're gonna buy for yourself? Oh man, a random toy. I don't. Toy could be a car. It could be some rare GI Joe card. I don't know. Just maybe something See, yeah. that you. I'm not into like material things. Like honestly, I'd probably take that money and run away. Like <laughs> no one would ever see me again. I would just try. Ten like, million is all it takes, ladies I'd and gentlemen. Buy, Ten million. I'd probably buy like I'd probably buy like a jet or something. Be like, I, I just want to go wherever the hell I want to go now. I was like, hey, leave. see you, dude. Spine Farm will give you that money, and immediately I'd be like, well, buy Spine Farm. You ain't never seen me again. <laughs> hell yeah. Thanks for the free cash, you idiot. <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, is there is there a particular country you've never had the opportunity to to go to to play a show that is just would mean a lot to you if you got there and played? I, man, I want to go everywhere. Uh, I really want to go to Australia. Um, I do want to go. The two, I think the two places that I want to go the most. I I definitely want to go. I want to go to Italy because I'm obviously Italian, and I want to go. I want to play a show in Puerto Rico. Like I would love to play. I would love to play in like my home um, and just you know like go back to like where i'm from and be like i kind of made it out and i'm just like and i'm here to celebrate with everyone so let's do it i love that hell yeah final awesome. final two questions uh you mentioned earlier that you're blacking out your one of your sleeves is there a particular yeah. tattoo that you just can't stand i mean obviously you're blacking out you don't want that ink on your body anymore but is there one in particular that you were just over that one and it kind of sparked the idea of of blacking out your arm uh, not really. I all of my tattoos are random anyway, um, so I never really hate any of them because I'm just like this is all just random things I love. Uh, the blackout idea was just like I, I've always wanted to do it, and I figured you know what, now's the time, <laughs> and so I started. That's a lot of that's a lot of hours just sitting there, just a, a pile of black ink circle thing filled this big. Yeah. Just... So, 
I started doing my arm and in like two and a half hours, uh, sh- the, the, my friend who did it, uh, she got like almost my entire bottom forearm. Um, and it wow. got to the point where like my arm was just so swollen. I was like, well, I can't take anymore. So she was like, all right, well, I'll see you in a couple of weeks for some more pain. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Joey, last question. Is there anything yeah. that freaks you out, scares you, phobia, this terrifies you? Random lights. <laughs> what do you mean? Elaborate. What do you mean? I, okay. I have to explain. So I have in my apartment a lot of automatic lights. Um, my my apartment, like, I turn off all the lights at night, but I have automatic lights so that, like, when I get up to go to the bathroom or something, middle of the night, like, one turns on and I don't got to, like, stumble around. But I've developed a fear for it now. So, like, now I'll be walking to the bathroom and a light will turn on and I'm just like, Ugh! Like, I will I will jump out of my own skin because I think that someone is there turning on the light. But I'm just like, there's literally no one here. It's just me. This is insane. And now I have, like, I have, like, a fear of random lights coming on when I'm in dark places. That is <laughs> that hilarious. Is, <laughs> that so Got it! It's, it's a thing. Hell, yeah. Well, Joey, we appreciate your time, man. Uh, stay safe on the road. We're excited about the 15 tracks you got back, the music videos, the singles coming. Please don't be a stranger. Maybe seven or eight months from now, we can we can touch base again and uh, promote some of those new records uh, if that's yeah, cool sure. with you. But uh, yeah, other- dude, I've I've want I've always wanted to do this anyway. I have no idea why it took us this long to do it. So please, I am willing to come back whenever you want me. I appreciate you. Thanks for saying that, man. Hell yeah, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Joey Avarsi. Give me a hell yeah. yeah boy. Have an awesome day, brother. Thank you so much. You too, man. Thanks, bro. Oh yeah.